All right, so today we'll be working on a top-down um, top, top down character controller. This is probably going to be first of my top-down series, but, you know. Uh, anyway, so this is what the control, this is what the project, like this, this is what it'll end up looking like. <coughs> anyway, so it'll end up looking like this, a simple top-down view. It doesn't rotate, the camera doesn't rotate with the cursor. So I find it very annoying. And the, and the character does not turn to your mouse. So the entire reason I, um, I've made, made it in such a way is that um, it would end up being one of those games which is ideal with a controller where your attack is retching or facing. So think of it as like a classic version of Zelda game. So for what we have, I did go ahead and created a, like, created, um, a project on off the third person sample template in the epic launch like under the epic launcher and these i did remove a few items so let's go ahead and um go what we've what i've done so far it's going to edit and we go to project settings and our project settings just go ahead and scroll down scroll down and find input settings input so i'm gonna go ahead and delete everything because i just want to go over how we work uh, go over how we do the input for the scheme. So we have we have like a blank input. So under the axis map, under axis mapping, I'm just gonna go and go ahead and call one one axis horizontal horizontal movement, and another axis will be called vertical movement. So next we have we need to have two bindings inside horizontal and vertical. And why this is is because we want um, positive or positive and negative scale, the scale, the value for the scale. So for that, we just gonna go since since it's the horizontal axis, we just hit this button over here, press the button, press the button we want to map to the horizontal axis. And you do that for the other one as well. So D and A will be the horizontal movement and See if you like so the positive value is which is the value that decides which way you which way is right. For example, right horizontal movement is on the x-axis and the x-axis will be on the positive side is facing your right. So that's what, that's what we're doing here. So we say hey D is the positive x-axis side. It is um, positive, whereas A is negative because it's on the negative side of the x-axis. Not quite sure if that makes sense, but it'll make sense when we get into the when you get into the blue when you get into blueprints. So under vertical movement, we're gonna go ahead and um, click and call like count A and S, which are the positive and negative for the y-axis. So W is on the positive of the y-axis, so that's upwards. That means that's that's vertical movement there. Then we have downward movement, which is S, so that is the negative value. So now that we have our input set up, we just we can just go on to like, test it. And this is not gonna work now because we like nothing's gonna move, nothing's gonna work because we don't have any inputs. Which is exactly what we want, because the third person character is the way he moves is not exactly the way we want him to move. So let's fix that. I'm gonna go ahead and open third person character blueprint. And um like you could like you could you could create a brand new character, but I just I, I really wouldn't bother it since it's everything's already set up. So I'm just gonna go ahead and rename the third person game mode to top down game mode. All right, we can just rename the third person character to be top down character. So I'm gonna go gonna go gonna, gonna go ahead and open up the character and under the character blueprint, like you just go under event graph and you see all of this. Yeah, we like we're, we're doing everything from scratch, baby. Like we don't need now, we don't need any of that. So now you were probably wondering, what is the point of deleting everything? And the point of deleting, deleting everything is to start from scratch. And that's exactly what we're gonna do. So we are gonna first get the horizontal, horizontal movement. So just go ahead and then, like right click, 
the right click to create new load and let's go and search for horizontal movement. Let's pull it and zoom in and you have horizontal movement. I'm going to do the same for vertical movement. So I'm just going to get vertical movement under the axis event. So these are the little red boxes and these are for events. Like these are for events, of course, like th these, are these are under events and all events will be red. So say we customize, like say call it call a custom event. Custom event. Oh, that is not what I wanted, but events are red anyway. If you didn't know already. So for this, we are going to go ahead and start getting the movement down. So the first thing we want is to add movements. So I'm just going to go ahead and say add movement in. Yes, that is exactly what we're looking for. And we're going to go ahead and duplicate this. So by duplicating it, we are basically just getting um, two inputs, like two, like two separate little functions for both the horizontal and vertical movement. So just gonna do that. Now, this by itself is absolute. Um, I I'd rather not say everything. I'd rather, I'd rather not completely mistaken, but it does absolute jack. It does nothing. So we're gonna go ahead down to variables and um, create a thing called the create a variable which is a flow, we're going to call it move speed. So you can drag move speed in and you get the option when you drag it in, you say get move speed. So like I'm pretty sure you probably know what, what the difference between a get and a set is, but just to run over it real quick, a uh, get is yeah, just getting the value that's already like set to the thing. So if I compile and save a get, would literally be pulling the default value we have in here. Whereas a set, we go ahead and say, hey, this is the new def this, 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 we set the value. So if you set, a, say, set the movement speed here, it will affect this. But right now, we don't need to worry about that. We're just getting the move speed, right? All right, so now, just a brief run through of this, right? So we have the horizontal movement speed, movement, which is a, which is the value from the axes. So for, for example, when I hold down B, it says, hey, it's one in that direction. So it's that, so it's just one. The move speed comes in, like the point of having the move speed is to multiply that to get a proper speed of how quickly they move. So we're just gonna go ahead and then pull this out and see float times float. So now that we have that, we're just gonna go ahead and plug this in. And I just go ahead and uh, duplicate that Control W. They just um, it's it's actually the same process like what we do here. We do here, like what we do to the horizontal. It's what we do to the vertical movement. We just plug that in there and we plug that in there, and essentially just plug just plug the appropriate values in movement speed times the axis values, and go ahead and put the scale value. Just drag and drop both pins in their respective scale value. So now. You may think, oh yeah, okay, so we have an input, we have the move speed and everything. We should, we should move, right? That is where you're wrong, my dear. We don't do, we can't just do that because we haven't set a direction for it. So say we get a direction, right? We have multiple ways to get a direction. It's pretty simple, quite, it's really simple. You could say, um, I think it was this and then get, um, was I remember it was get forward vector. Now you can say get forward vector and we just plop that in. And then we refer to the capsule. Say hey. Oh what what are we missing here? Um there's something. Okay, maybe like, we actually can't do that. Okay, we can't connect the capsule to get word rotation. Oh, right, we get the word, get the word rotation. We get forward vector. Just drag and drop into vertical. Yeah, in this in 
theory should move us. And it doesn't. So, oh, there is a good reason for that. Anyway, that's not that's what we're looking for. But we won't move because we don't have a direction to move in. So, to get this, what we're going to do is simply go ahead and say, um, get control, um, on, they get control rotation, but yes. So you get, get, so you get, so you get control rotation. We say, hey, we're going to break into, we're going to call it the break rotor. And the break rotor and the rotator. You get, a, you get a break rotator. And we want the Z axis, we want um, the rotation according to the Z axis. So we're going to go ahead and pull this out. I'm going to say, make rotator. And, you know, we get the rotation of the thing, of the thing. Now, we have the rotation somewhat. Like, we can say, we get the rotation, make the rotator. Like, we do all that, right? Now, we don't, now we need to, now we have to plug these values, the, the values we get from this into the movement. But see, you, you notice we can't actually plug this in without getting the rotation. It's like when you plug it in, you get um, here the return value, which I don't quite know, which is a rotator. The values for the rotator return value does not match the um, vector which you input into the add, in the add movement input. So to get this, we just go ahead and say um, get forward rotator vector. And we also get the, the right vector, the forward vector and the right vector from the rotator. So we get those rotations, and we just um, we just plug those values in, and voila! So we um, this was attached to the vertical movement, and this was attached to the horizontal movement. So grab that, put that in there. Grab that, put that in there. Compile, save. Move speed is 100. Compile, save, and boom, baby. We have a perfect rotation. So there was a bug I ran into a while ago where if you hold down one axis value, like specifically the um, horizontal input, he, the cat would rotate, and essentially, that's not what happens here. There's nothing to worry about. We're done. We, we, we got it. Anyway, so now that we have um, the movement set up, I'm just going to go ahead and say, whoop, just highlight all that. Uh, press C on my keyboard and just say, I call it cat. Uh, so that you don't have any confusion from the language. So the point of this is like this is a comment. So usually in like C sharp or C plus plus, you just hold down, you go and double slash. Like you you put something like double slash and then comment this stuff out. You just drag hold C. So I yeah we aren't doing that into the thing. So let's wrap this up real quick because I don't want to make this like a 20 minute tutorial because it's quite it's quite simple anyway. It's still in this way. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna get the camera above him. And I'll probably change I'll probably work change the camera controls down the line. But for now, I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, mess around with the cam with the spring arm, which is a camera boom, and the camera rotation. So um we get the Z axis rot like we we, are, we need to mess with the Z axis of the spring arm. So we're just going to go ahead and say the transform is default. And you see target offset. Just crank the baby up. Let's just say, just say 600. There we go. The camera is all the way up there. Compile, save. Now if you play this, like you'll see that the camera just, you know, this isn't facing the player. So for that, just grab the camera. And um, can just change the rotation. Change the rotation along the y axis. So, 
oh, that is still. My bad. And you grab the rotation, you rotate it to fit the angle. So I'm thinking 270 degrees would do. But then I just like directly above him. So let's say 250 degrees. No. 190? No. Crap. You know, that's actually much faster. We just couldn't grab this. Grab that, just rotate it, you know, just, just rotate it. Do, do, don't be like me and then try to do it, I try to do it today with, with the transform tool. And voila, movement. So later down the line, we're gonna, like we're gonna talk about um, how we go ahead and how we can add a bunch of other things like enemies and whatnot. But for now, that's all folks. I hope this tutorial was helpful and I'll see you in the next one.